Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to retouch this room using some tools, AI tools that you can use for free. And we'll also be using a bit of Photoshop. When it comes to real estate edits, you have to be a bit careful. They're a bit tricky since no one really does real estate photography just for hobby. Usually it's done with a commercial intent of renting the space and therefore your edits can't be too loud since the person who rents the room, if they find out that it looks completely different than what they saw, then that can lead to negative reviews. So we have to walk this fine line between realism and a good edit. And that's exactly what we are gonna do. And how this process will start is with ChatGPT. By the way, the links to all the tools that we will be using are given in the description, as well as the link to download this particular image has been given. So let's get started. We're gonna go over to ChatGPT because we will need, first of all, a good prompt to start this process. So when you upload your image on ChatGPT, you can just ask it to create a prompt for a refined version of this room. So that's exactly what I did and I got a nice long prompt. So we can just copy this prompt and now our first AI tool comes into play which is going to be Instruct Picks to Picks. This is a tool which as the name suggests where you can just upload your image, give it some instruction to edit and it just gives it follows that instruction and it'll give you a result. So basically a prompt based editing, which is getting very, very popular these days with these AI editing tools. So first of all, let's upload our image here. Under edit instruction, then we are simply going to paste the chat GPT prompt. One of the main things that we're looking out for in these real estate edits is to basically cut out the tonal variation that you often see. For example, here in the walls, you can see that some part of it is bright, some is dark. Uh, in the ceiling, in the walls, and you just have to even this out. So if you can get a result which just looks much more smoother to the eye, that's what we are after without changing anything. Like for example, the furniture shouldn't change too much and all these things, okay? And this tool does a pretty good job. So once we have this ready, we can simply hit generate and let's wait for this first result here. Right, so we've got our first result here. And what you can do is, you can do a couple of things after you notice your first result. If you, of course, if you like it, you can right click and save this image. But one good thing about this tool is that if I do hit generate again, it sometimes can produce a totally different image, which may be better or may be worse. So sometimes it's a bit of a gamble, but let's see the second generation. All right, so I think this even looks much more smoother. That's what we are after right now. It has changed the colors a bit. Can you see this wooden part has slightly become more darker? Now you have to ask yourself, does that make too much of a difference? I don't think so. As long as the shape is the same and somebody can see that, yes, this is something wooden, that's fine. Now the color of the walls has changed a bit. Okay, that we can take care of in Photoshop. Even if we wanna get this part back to the original, that's where those steps will come later on towards in Photoshop. But something like this is gonna be an important call. For example, here, this definitely, the bed looks much better much more smoother, but then it's a different color. In my case, this, this much liberty, it's okay to take even in a real estate edit because nobody's gonna complain about the color of the blanket. But let's say you wanted something which is even more closer to the original image, then what you can do here is, there are two options here, one which says text CFG and image CFG. What this means is, how much of weight is the generation giving to either the image here, or the text means the edit instruction here. If you increase the weight of either, your generation will be closer to either the image or the text. For example, let me show you. If I, so this is really aggressive. Even if I just increase it to, let's say, from 1.5 to 2, you're gonna see that when we hit generate, now more of the original elements in the image, uh, in the original image will start to get reflected in the generated image. So let's wait for this. So you can see that we just went from 1.5 to 2, but here there's pretty much no difference than we got than what we got with the original. So you can play around with this, but what I would say is just go in small increments like the default is 1.5 and I've seen up to 1.7 you can get some decent results which will start to even incorporate colors of the blanket and all yet give you a much more slicker looking shot. What I did was I left it at 1.5 and I just generated this a couple of times. It's completely free so that's not a problem and finally I settled for this image and you can see as compared to the original, it looks a bit different, but as long as the room and the furniture looks fine, it's it's okay. And we're gonna change and get back some of those original colors towards the end anyway. Now you can also see one problem with this is that it downscales the image. This is where we go on to the next step, which is we are gonna upscale this image, but not just any normal upscaling. We are actually gonna be using a creative AI upscaler. So let's see that tool. So the creative AI upscaler that we're gonna be using is called Deep Dream Generator. and 
once you create an account with them, you get 30 generations per month, which is one generation per day, which is more than enough. And it's a pretty simple tool to use. By the way, if you want to know about the difference between creative upscaling and normal upscaling, a few days back, I released a video on that. So you can check that out later. The link is hovering on top. I will also leave the link to this video in the description. But right now, let's get started. The first thing that we'll have to do after you've created an account and you have clicked on this option that says AI Upscaler is to upload this image that we got from Instruct Pix to Pix. And after we have selected this particular picture, it's going to reflect here. The first job is to select how much we want to upscale this by. So because Instruct Pix to Pix had really made this very small, what we can do in this case is we can go for twice the size. So you can see here the new dimensions. And this should be enough, let's say, for social media usage or even a website. That's what most people need it for at least. And now we have some sliders here since this is a creative upscaler. There's going to be a creativity uh, slider, which just means how much liberty can we give it to change the things in the scene. Remember, again, we have to be slightly conservative here, but we also want it to incorporate some changes because it can increase the quality of the image also. So what I like to do in such a scenario is just keep this to one. So this is like a fine balance. When it comes to resemblance, push this to the highest. That means the shapes of everything should be maintained. So nothing really changes, like the shape of the bed and all these things shouldn't really change. So we're being conservative here. HDR, to be frank, doesn't really matter. We're talking about high dynamic range, but since there is a window there, so just to even out the exposures, I'll just keep it to two. But to be frank, I've seen this one doesn't have too much of an effect. This slider is very important. The strength slider can be very aggressive because just like the creativity slider, if you even push it to two, it changes a lot of things. So I'll just keep this at the default at one. Under the upscale mode, you can go to be frank for anything here. I've seen it doesn't really make a difference, but we'll go for art realism, which is usually selected by default. And we want a photorealistic image. I'll leave the engine at standard. And just to give it the context about this image, we're going to copy the same prompt that we had used and slightly edited before. So we're just going to paste this here. And we are all ready for our upscale. So let's wait for the results here. Right, so our new upscale image is ready. It's very important that you go back and forth to see if it has incorporated any changes which can make the room and the furniture look really different. So let's see, this was, this is the original. And if you go slowly, you can see that it has not really changed anything. It has just made things sharper and nicer. So this is a good example of using a creative upscaler. And finally, we are just going to download this image and the final steps of this edit are going to take place inside Photoshop. So let's go there. All right, so we are inside Photoshop. So let's get started. If you're someone you're new to Photoshop, you can also go through my completely free course on Photoshop for beginners, which has 20 videos, because even in the age of AI, it's important to know the fundamentals of Photoshop because they can help you with the final retouch. So I'll leave the link to that free course in the description. You can check it out later. But right now, let's get started with this edit. What I've done here is I took that upscaled image here, which I've put on top and underneath that we have the original. So basically, I've superimposed these two images because now we're going to take some of the colors back from the original and infuse it right here. So how do we do that? Well, it's very easy to do this with layer masking. So with this new upscaled image on top, we can open up a layer mask on it. Then first of all, let's correct the issue with the wall here, because if you look at the wall on the original, this definitely is not white. So we need to at least get some of the uh, colors here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we can take something like the quick selection tool. And let's just make sure you are on this, which has the details. And just make the selection. If it goes out of bounds, you can always hold down Alt or Option, which will subtract from the selection and trying to just get the wall here and maybe a bit here. And when you need to add, you can hold down shift and add. Just don't go over the furniture here. But even if you do, it's not going to make such a big difference because anyway, when we recover those colors, it's going to be done in a very, very subtle way. For example, a bit of this door is there, no problem at all. Because the main thing is this, we've got a shot which is devoid of tonal variation, which looks bad. So when we do start to get stuff from the original image, which had that tonal variation, it didn't look too smooth. We have to do this in a very subtle way. Otherwise, the whole purpose is defeated. So what we can do here is, now that these areas have been selected, make sure you are on the layer mask and wherever we 
fill black on these selected areas, that's where it'll reveal this from the layer below. That's how layer masking works. So in order to fill this with black, what we can do is we can go to edit, we can go over to fill, and under content, you can select black. And the moment you do that, now this part is coming from the original. But like I said, you don't want it to be too strong. Otherwise, what's the point? So what we can do at this point is we can first of all get rid of the marching ants by holding down the shortcut control command D, which is deselect. And right now you can see that this looks too strong and the edges don't look very good. This is where what we can do is make sure the layer mask is selected. And you double click on the layer mask and you'll see this properties window. So one of the things we can do is we can decrease the density of this layer mask. So if we do that, we're making those changes slightly more subtle. And just to take care of these rough edges, what we can do is we can just feather the layer mask. So then that's just gonna soften those areas. And you can see that now we're starting to get, if we compare with the original, getting a mix of both. Now this is completely up to you. If you're willing to push the boundaries and you say, okay, I just want a touch or a hint of that color, original color, but I prefer the smoothness, then you can even decrease this further. So this is completely the choice. Just make sure it does resemble the original room. So I think something like this is fine. And let's say even for this wooden part, we wanted something similar. So we can do the same thing. Just hit the selection here and we can just fill it with black again. And that's also going to get a bit of the original colors back. So now if we compare it to the original, both the wall and that wooden part look much more closer. At this point, since we are done recovering the colors, because I've decided not to change the blanket because I just feel this looks much better than the original and it's not gonna cause any problem for someone who's renting out this room since it's not that big a change. So at this point, we go to the next step, which is gonna be the final retouch, which will be done by using generative fill. So let's do that. So let's create a new layer and let's stamp everything onto this new layer. So we are starting from scratch. We can use the shortcut Control Command Alt Option E to stamp the effect of these two layers onto here. So now what we can do here is first of all, this part outside slightly looks too bright. So what we can do here is we can just make a selection again of this part, not the whole thing because there is a bit of a balcony there. Now this is up to you. What do you want here? Because this will also depend on what actually is there outside the room. For example, if there's a bit of greenery, then in your generator fill, you can type greenery. But in this particular case, it was not exactly evident what was there outside the room. So I'm just gonna type in sky here and let's see what kind of results we get here. All right, so we've got our three results with generator fill. This doesn't look too good. Neither does this one, but let's see the third one. I think this looks fine, but what I, was, I will still do is that this looks too strong, slightly looking fake, so we can just decrease the opacity of this layer a bit. So that is just a hint of those clouds in the blue sky is visible. Secondly, let's go back to our original layer here. We just have this bit of an issue with the thing at the corner here. So this is slightly proving to be a distraction. And when you want to remove something in generator fill, you can just leave an empty prompt and that's going to take care of that. And also this thing was added here, which is not looking good. So let's also take care of this in a similar way. All right, so that's about it. And I think this is starting to look really nice and slick. And now we can export this image. And finally, because we did use generator fill a couple of times, so those areas can be of a slightly lower resolution. So if I've used generator fill a lot of times, I do like to upscale the image one final time, but this time we won't be using a creative AI upscaler. We'll just be using a normal AI upscaler. And one of the best ones out there is by iloveimg.com. So we're just gonna go over to upscale image. Let's put the post Photoshop image here. All right, so it has upscaled it to twice the size and you can see that has made it even sharper. Now just let's just see the before and after with the original image after we download this one. All right, so this is what we started off with and finally we have finished with this. You can see the room looks similar. That's the most important things. We have taken the liberty to change some of the things like the color of the blanket. But like I said, this can easily be avoided if in the very first step you just increase the weight of the image. So in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And if you want to follow along all my experiments in the realm of AI image editing, then make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.